All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar this morning. Um, just want to check real quick if everyone can hear me and see my screen. Okay. Awesome. Got a few comments. Everything looks good on my end. So again, thanks for your time this morning. Um, and welcome to the webinar, Fusion Can Model, Render, and Send to Cam, Really? Um, just a little bit of um, startup information. So we have about the next 30 minutes reserved for this webinar. Our agenda, we're going to be talking about some of the capabilities of Fusion 360. We'll be digging into live inside of the software, some modeling, some rendering, and some of the CAM environment. So the plan this morning is um, just basically to get an overview of some of the capabilities of Fusion and to answer some questions that you might have. Um, on that note, if anybody does have any questions during the presentation, you should have a questions pod or a panel. And go ahead and just type your questions into the box. I'll have some time at the end of the webinar towards the end for Q&A. Um, so if you do have some questions, just type them in. And at the end of the webinar, I will read through and get to any of those questions. Um, I can also unmute you if you'd like to speak. Um, again, that will be at the end of the webinar. So in 30 minutes, hopefully you'll have a better idea of the capabilities of Fusion and where exactly you will be able to use it. So um, this is Fusion. Actually, back to that title. I know that title is a, a bit of a mouthful. Fusion can model, render, and send to CAM. What the title should have been was Fusion can sculpt, direct, edit, do parametrics, render, animate, simulate, general, generate toolpaths, and send to Kim, really? <laughs> but I figured that title was a little bit too long-winded. Plus, we do not have time for all of that in 30 minutes. So I picked a few of the environments that I think are um, really useful and pretty cool. And we're going to step through a few of those modeling, rendering, and Kim this morning. <clears throat> okay, so over to Fusion now. Um, we're going to be taking a look at a few of the components on this model, a little more detailed. Um, as you can see, this is a full assembly inside of Fusion. We've got some joints. Um, we've got multiple components and assembly structure. We haven't even have some contact set in motion um, simulation. <clears throat> The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the parametric modeling for part of this clamp arm. And then we're going to take a look at the assembly structure here as well. We're also going to take a look at the freeform environment for creating this handle. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump right into the clamp arm file. And as we can see, I have this set up as an assembly. We have the arm, and then we have the bar in two pieces. So I'm actually, I thought for this webinar, just to demonstrate some of the parametrics for Fusion, I would actually just build that from scratch here. Um, so this is a new uh, blank file. And we're just going to create a sketch here. As you can see, regular parametric um, sketching environment. I can pick which plane I would like to sketch on. And I'm going to go ahead and um, start with the centered rectangle. So a lot of this workflow will be very similar to what you're used to if you use parametric software. Um, if not, there's some really powerful tools for this. Um, for example, as I'm building this rectangle, if I want a specific size, I can actually just type in the dimensions as I go, tab to switch boxes, and then enter to build that rectangle. So that's going to be the base of my clamp. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add an arc. And so we'll just go somewhere like this. And we'll add another one somewhere out here. 
notice I'm kind of snapping to tangency down there. So we're actually using our geometric constraints automatically. I'm going to go ahead and add a line to close off this profile. One of the things I love about Fusion is it's got a live profile calculation. So as soon as your profile closes, you can see that it has done so. All right, I'm going to add a few dimensions to this design and kind of get it fully locked down. Uh, we'll say this is an inch. And we'll make this about four inches. Um, I'll go ahead and use a concentric constraint here. And so our model's pretty well locked down. I'm going to go ahead and exit the sketching environment. One of the cool tools in Fusion is the push press pull tool. Um, depending on what you pick, press pull will decide which actual modeling feature you should use. For example, here I've selected profiles. So what do you do with a profile when you push it? It's an extrusion. Uh, we're just going to pull it out about half an inch. And I would like to make it symmetric overall length. All right, so that's the very beginning. Um, We'll go ahead and add a few more features on this, and then we're going to jump back into the sketch and show where the parametrics really help. So I'm going to use my modeling toolbox here. We can actually use it to search for tools instead of going up and finding them in the toolbars. We'll go ahead and sketch right on that face. And we'll just do an offset about an eighth of an inch. And again, I'm going to press pull on that. And we'd like to add material. If we keep going, it'll switch to a cut. Just depends on what we want. Now, notice the increments are in tenths of an inch. If I zoom in a little closer, the increments will update to my current zoom level. If I was out farther, they would be bigger. So a lot of the tools in Fusion are very easy to do, just kind of heads up display. And I do see a couple questions coming in there. Just to uh, remind you guys, I will come back to those at the end of the presentation. Um, so, Dwight, I'll be sure to answer that. All right, I want to go ahead and add a few fillets to the model just to kind of clean it up. And I do want different sized fillets, so I can create multiple in the same um, feature. And so again, that kind of live just push-pull functionality allows me to get it visually looking how I want. Um, I can also type in the exact size that I want. OK, so getting closer, I'm going to go ahead and add a, some chamfers. So basically, just pick all the edges. And we'll type in a 0.05 there for the chamfer distance. The last thing I want to do is add kind of a little cutout on this face. So again, I'll use my toolbox and sketch and just offset that profile. Um, and so I, would, I do want to extrude this in, but I want it to have a taper. So I can basically just grab this little handlebar and we'll give it a 45 degree taper at a negative 0.05 distance. All right, so pretty easy to get that feature in there. And the last thing I'm going to do is on this model is just mirror that across. So again, if I don't want to search for the tool in the toolbars, or I don't know where it's at, or it's quicker for me, I can just start typing in the model toolbox for the tool I'm looking for and actually activate it right from there. So in this case, I do want to model my feature across that plane. So back to the beginning of my parametric sketch, one of the powerful things about parametrics, if you're not used to this workflow, is we can go back in time and edit anything we want. And the model would update to the changes that were made. In fact, I could, you know, maybe I want to experiment with this and see what would happen if the arm was a little bit longer there. And so as I update these features upstream, downstream, everything updates as well. 
Okay, so some basic parametrics. Now I want to take a look at how do we turn this into an assembly. You notice in this file here, we started with the clamp, but all of the same modeling features are in here, and it's now an assembly. So how does that happen? Um, I'm going to go ahead and sketch a profile for the bar. So I'm going to use a centered slot. And we'll just add some dimensions here. We'll make it 0.2. And let's go ahead and lock the middle down to the origin. And I want to extrude that. Now, instead of joining or cutting material, we have some other options. I, I can either make it a new body, will be a new body in the same component, or I can turn this bar into a brand new component. And so watch my icon up here. You notice it changes now to an assembly. And we'll go ahead and rename that to bar. In fact, this should also be a separate component. So we'll just go ahead and turn that into a component. And we now have an assembly of two separate components. So very easy to work with. It's a little bit different from what you might be used to from some other you know, inventor or other modeling programs. Um, but it's really nice. The whole design is in one single file, so you don't have to worry about cross-references, um, you know, multiple file management. Um, in fact, I can activate any one of these components. And let's just do a shell. Um, we'll do a little bit smaller, right? So I'm actually making a change, which is living exclusively inside of the subcomponent. And then I can return back to the assembly. And I can actually tell which features are associated um, with which components. So if I were to activate this and do maybe like a, just push a hole through it. <clears throat> okay. So anyways, it's a pretty neat workflow for multiple components. As you can see here in this design, um, we've got several levels. We have a main assembly. We've, we've referenced that clamp arm assembly from another file um, in my project into this assembly. Um, and then we also have the trigger assembly as its own subcomponent. So we do have all the you know full parametric tools in there um, on this assembly that I've built here. Uh, one really cool thing once you build an assembly, um, you'll notice it starts acting like an assembly, but fusion remembers the position of the object. So if you move something and you want to revert, or you move something and you want it to stay, you can capture that position and it actually puts it in the timeline for you. Um, we also have uh, full assembly joint tools. So if I need this to be like a, a joint that moves We can do that, and it will move appropriately. Um, or oftentimes, I will use the rigid group. It was built as it needs to be. These components are bonded to each other. So, OK, without getting too much deeper into the modeling tools, you know, hopefully that gives you an idea of the kind of you know, modeling and assembly tools that Fusion is capable of. Uh, fully parametric, um, it's got some really great capabilities, and I really love the workflow of having everything in, in one file, um, as well as being able to link designs which are created separately into your file. All right, I want to jump over to a new file now, and this is the 3D mouse that's sitting on my desk. So I just model it up real quick in Fusion. 
And I want to take a look at the rendering environment. So all these environments that I talked about in Fusion, they're all within the same file. So just as you don't have to switch to a new file to start an assembly, you don't have to have a new file for rendering, for CAM, for simulation. Um, so I'm just going to switch right here to the rendering environment. Gives me a new toolbar, changes some things up. We have a lot of tools here for adding materials, for adjusting the um, textures in the scene. Um, so for example, if I want to change this is made out of a rubber right now to steel, I can just drag it and drop it. We also have full rendering tools. We have cloud rendering capabilities. I want to turn on the in canvas render. This, if you're building a render, this is going to give you a good idea of what your full quality render would look like. So a lot of times I turn this on as I'm setting up materials and things. I also have saved some views ahead of time that I would like to have rendered so that I can click here in the, in the view setting and just return to them. So you notice the longer you sit here, the more it will refine itself. It will get better and better looking. In the last update last week, they added this, uh, this new thing down here where basically it will automatically render until it gets to excellent, and then you can bump it up even further if you want from there. As you uh, add appearances or rotate your model, the rendering will begin over. Um, here we have some cloud renders. So I have it set up to where uh, if I want, every time that I save the file, Fusion will automatically render full quality images in the cloud and make those available to me. I also have a turntable here, it's a little off center, but you can render a model that is a turntable so a user would actually click and drag right inside of the window to be able to see your model from multiple angles without having to view the 3D model. Fully rendered though. Pretty awesome. Um, I want to jump into this model. Um, this is just a little wireless phone charging mount that I'm building to mount in my Jeep. Um, I really thought this was pretty cool to me. The wood grain on this is really good. And so I wanted to jump into this file and just show you on these appearances. The appearance library that Fusion has is really pretty great. Um, you'll notice there's a huge library in the Fusion appearance libraries. They're not all stored locally, but if you want to download anything that is not already there, you just click this and it downloads it for your file. Um, and we have a lot of um, I'm just going to drag some different wood grains on here. Some mahogany or walnut. Um, the texture, the uh, you know highlights on the wood grain are pretty pretty great. And I didn't have to do any work. I did not do any mapping. If I do need to modify it, it's very easy to do. Like for these 3D wood grains, I can just grab and move the wood grain in and out or rotate it. And that's not even fully rendered. Let me pull a few of these open. Um, looks really good. It's even got, you know, divot tints in the wood. So the rendering environment, very easy to use. Everything is drag and drop. You do not have to be a visualization expert to use this and get some really awesome looking renders. If you guys are not aware, you can get um, Fusion, Autodesk Fusion blog updates. Um, they have like rendering galleries if you follow them on uh, Instagram or any of those places. They even feature renders from people in the community and they do look really good. So definitely encourage you guys to check that out if you're using Fusion. Um, the rendering environment is pretty awesome. Okay, let's stop that. And then, of course, I could return back to the modeling environment and continue working on the design. Um, let me jump back to this uh, real quick. The, 
we were looking at the clamp previous to the rendering, and uh, one thing I did want to show you was some of the freeform capabilities. So not everybody's going to be able to use this. It depends on what you're designing, but this is a really awesome method for doing some pretty complex shapes. Um, what I want to do is show you how this was built briefly. So I'm going to roll back to before I added those finger grips. This is what the model looked like. To get into the free form, this is the modeling environment. We're just going to create a form. And what I'm going to do is convert part of my B-Rep face into a T-spline model. So I can control kind of how fine my uh, body is. And even after the fact, uh, for example, I don't need to do anything on the top part, so I can delete some of the edges and make the model a little simpler. Um, we basically use this edit form tool, and you can just basically push and pull. Um, and then you can use some keys to do some extra, you know, extruding and things like that. Um, in this case, all I need to do is add some finger grips. So I'm just going to grab a couple of bumps every other row, a couple of edges, and use that edit form tool. Kind of pull this out into space. And one of the really cool things about this T-splines is you can explore some shapes that would have taken you way too long to do, like in a regular um, parametric, you know, lofting. This would have been crazy. So I just you know, I wouldn't have even thought of doing this, but it actually looks kind of cool to pull it up and get like more of a stair step shape. You know, as the handle rotates back, that might even help you to grip it better. Um, I could also, you know, change the amount that the bump comes out towards the bottom. So that freeform environment is a really cool way to just explore some quick designs for something like this. And once I'm happy with the design, we'll go ahead and finish that. And I'm going to use a tool called uh, Replace Face. So we're going to replace that original face with this new surface body. And there's the new grip. So we'll go ahead and finish it up. We'll add a fillet down there. And then we'll add fillets here and here. And then I got a, you know, pretty quickly I got a nice looking grip there. Okay. So that's the freeform environment. Um, I skipped that on the modeling. Uh, we've talked about rendering. The last thing I want to talk about is the cam environment. <clears throat> so I actually created this part straight from this model. If you check it out, I basically did a rectangular sketch, extruded it. I combined the clamp with it to cut the material out, and then I turned it into its own component. And I just have it opened in another tab right here. So again, the cam environment is just another environment for the same part file. And as you can see, I already have some toolpaths set up. I want to do a new setup, and I'll just do one operation here, and then we'll take a look at the finished. So the first thing I want to do is change the size of my stock. And then let's move our zero point there. And I'm just going to do a 3D adaptive clearing operation on this profile. So we have a huge tool library. This is totally customizable. Um, right now I just want to bullnose. So let's take those filters off, and I'll pick the 1 8 bullnose. Uh, we have a lot of other settings here. I'm not going to get into all those um, since this is an overview. But if, as soon as I accept that, you'll see it's going to start generating the path, and you'll actually see the tool path start showing up on the model. This is associated to the model. So if my model changes the, and I return to the CAM environment, I can regenerate tool paths on the geometry without having to redo any work. You can also simulate it. So I like to um, have the stock showing up, 
and we'll just kind of skim through here and see what it does. So we'll actually simulate the whole process. You can see if it's doing it how you thought it would, if it's missing anything, rotate and see it from different angles. So this is, you know, obviously just the first step on this model. We have a lot more operations we need to do. It's a pretty complex shape. Um, I'm going to activate this setup and we'll just go through the whole simulation. So this simulation can do multiple operations in multiple tools. We can even color code it so you can tell which tool is doing what. You can actually see as it removes material what it's doing. Jumped ahead a little too quickly there. Okay, and of course this would be meaningless if you couldn't get it to your machine. So we can, you know, get our code generated. And send it straight out to our machines. Again, just another environment out of the mini inside of Fusion. So there, those were three main capabilities of Fusion. As I said, there are more. We're not going to cover any more. Um, we are getting close to the end of the webinar. So a couple things. I just wanted to pull up the D3 website real quick. Um, if you go to our product design page, um, we are we do have a lot of uh, Fusion articles, tech tips, and things that will be coming out. Um, the uh, offline mode, I was pretty excited about this. This just came out last week, and so there's a great article about what it is, what it does, and what they'll be adding in the future. Um, as well, we're, we definitely have more to come on the Fusion side. We'll be having a um, blog and all kinds of things, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, you know, hopefully that gave you a good idea of the capabilities of, of Fusion, and, you know, if you need more information, you can always go to d3tech.net. Um, you can check out stuff on our website. There's, you know, Autodesk's Fusion blogs are great as well. Um, feel free to reach out to us anytime. 